Hey everybody, I'm Ferrara, and today we're going to be getting me a dog. I've been working for Farmer John, helping him with all his cows, sorting them, finding paths between them, helping them with their fields, and helping them on jog, and he still paid me zero dollars. Not a single penny, okay? So, we're going to get me a dog, and I think the perfect place to get it is at Google. It's going to be easy. No, I'm kidding, but, you know, why, why not just jump from Farmer John to Google? It's, just, it's a natural transition, okay? But really the reason why I'm inspired to do this is because on geek for geeks I found something called Google Interview Preparation. So what we're going to be doing today is seeing whether we're fit to be Google engineers by trying out the interview question. So let us see what we got. Google Interview Preparation. So we start with our pro popular, pop, I can't, I can speak English, I swear. Popular articles. So sum of bit difference among pairs, modular exponent, okay. So, it's just a bunch of random, like, CS stuff. But we were already prepared for CS, right? We did use it ago, okay? We don't need to read. Already read enough in English and A-Push, okay? We're not doing any more of that. Popular subjective, what the heck are subjective problems? Like, multiple answers? Or is it just like, novel unknown? I don't even know. Okay, let's see. What is the output of print <laughs> slash five? Okay, honestly, I don't know. I do it. Do you actually have to know the language for this one? Yeah, let me just, what is it? Was in C or something? Bruh. Okay, I don't want to know the answer, but that, that's kind of troll. We don't, we don't have to worry about subjective problems, okay? Thrashing and OS, blah, blah. Okay, th these are kind of troll, you know? Let's get to the serious stuff. All right, popular coding problems. This is my kind of thing, okay? Musical, it's gonna come in handy right here. So let us start with some cool problems. Subarray with a given sum. All righty, so. Subarray with a given sum. Submission is 179,442. And only accuracy of 24.99. Wait, this is difficult to easy, man. Wait, huh. Interest. Well. Given an array, an unsorted array of A of size n of non-negative integers, find a continuous subarray which adds to a given number f. All right, straightforward, simple, one-line, one-line problem statement. Okay, not used to go where it's like a 60-line problem statement. I'm already like in geeks for geeks over here. There's literally no extra cows involved. I love cows, okay, but I don't like seeing 60 lines. Oh, okay. So the problem statement straightforward, the input straightforward. So why don't we just jump into this? Alright, so the first sample input we're given is 5, so the length of the array is 5, and then we have 12, and then our array itself is 1, 2, 3, 7, 5. And now we want to find the subarray of this that sums to 12. Let's, okay, so the best way to approach problems is to think of the brute force solution, right? So, the best brute force solution would just to be take every single subarray, and then check if each one equals to 12. But that's going to take too long, because not only do you have to, like, loop through every single subarray which takes n squared time you also have to loop through each number in the subarray to sum them so that's going to take like n cubed okay that's not going to work another thing we could okay a cool trick whenever you have array sum problems is if you start with the sum if you want to get the next sum like one two you don't have to redo one and then add two you can just add whatever sum you have here and then add two to that so you get three and then you have three over here, right? So if you want to find one plus two plus three, you don't even have to look at one plus two. You just have to do three, which you already found, and then add three to it. And then same for seven, you add three, six plus seven, and then you get 13. So that's a cool trick you could do. And then if you want to get rid of a number, then you just subtract that number from it. So if you want to find two plus three, you already have six, and then you subtract one from it to get five. So what else can we do? All right, so let's, let's just try some stuff. So let's say that we start with nothing in our sum. Okay, we're just a little bit little dot over here that has no friends and then we add in one so how do we get to 12 okay one is clearly less than 12 right right if i could do math could i do math hmm yeah maybe maybe one is greater than 12 but today we're going to decide that one is less than 12. because less than 12 we have to add more to it because taking away the one is only going to decrease itself so we add more to it and we get one plus two is three still too small so you add one plus two plus three is six then you add another one. Seven is one. Uh, six plus seven is thirteen. But that's too big. Okay, so now we're in an interesting scenario where we're too big. So adding another one is just gonna make it bigger, and that doesn't help us. So we have to subtract something from our sum. So which one do we subtract? We could subtract seven, or we could subtract one. And I think that okay. Let's say that we subtract seven, right? Then we get 1, 2, 3, but we already checked 1, 2, 3 over here. So, we it makes more sense to take out the 1. So we take out the 1, and we get 13 minus 1 is 12. And, well, blame it, we got the answer! Let's go! Okay, that was kind of a boring example, huh? 
Let's try to make this more interesting. All right, so the second sample info we're given is 10, 15, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Noise soup. So we start with 1, then you add in 2, then you add in 3, right? And you get 6, then you add in 4, and you get 10, and then you add in 5, and you get 15. Bruh, <laughs> we already got 50. Okay, that was not interesting at all. Bruh. Eh. Okay, let's try to find something interesting. So let's say that we want like 5 and 6, which sums to 11. So we want our sum to be 11. And now let's try it. So we start with nothing. Then we can start with 1, then 3, then 6, then 10, then 15. Okay, so 15 is too big, so we get rid of the first one. So we do 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I mean, 5, 5. five. And that is 15 minus 1, which is 14. Still too big. Do 3, 4, 5, which is 14 minus 2, which is 12. And then we add in, we subtract another one because that's too big. We get 9. And then now we had to add in a 6. 15, that's too big. So we take out the 4. And we're left with 5, 6 is equal to 11. Yes, this algorithm works. Okay, let, let, let's try to explain this. So basically, if you're less than your sum, you add to the right of your summary. And if you're greater than your sum, they subtract from the left of the summary. And once you reach the end, like if you get to like the situation where you're only taking this like dot over here, then you're basically done. And that means there's no summary with your desired sum, so you just return negative one. Noise. Cool. Algorithm one down. Okay, we're not gonna actually code this up because I think interviews are more focused on the actual algorithm, not on how to implement it. So I think we're good for now. Let's move on to the next question. Maximum index, epic. All right, hey, another one line problem statement. Yusuko, you really gotta learn, okay? Given an array A of n positive integers, the task is to find the maximum j minus i subjected to the constraint of a i is less than or equal to a j. So basically, you're saying if you have an array, find the farthest apart numbers where the left one is less than the right one. Okay, doesn't seem too bad. Yeah, okay, okay. We, we, we gotta figure this boy out. First step first, we gotta look at our input and see whether we can figure out a path. All right, so we're given nine and then one. Noise. Okay, so this is our input, right? So if we just go through it real quick. So 34 is less than 80 and that's as far as it gets. So that's zero, this one's index zero and then this one's index five, right? So our current greatest that we found so far is five, right? But then we look at eight. What's the one that's farthest away from eight but greater than it? 33. So the distance is six, and that's greater, so we take that. Anything else? No. So our answer would be six, which is what they say it is. Okay, cool. How do you algorithmify this? First thing I think when you see like less than or equal to is like sorting, right? Because it's basically saying the left one has to be less than the right one. So how do we sort this? Okay, noise, we have a sorted array, so... Okay, so we start with 80, right? So let's say that 80 is our J, AJ. We do... This is the greater of the two. So which one to the left is less than it, but has the largest distance? You see it's 34. And we saw that the distance between the two is 5, so our current max is 5. So we, And then we get rid of 80, because we already looked at it. And 80 can never be the I of another number. So we don't never have to consider it again, because... All the other numbers will be the J's, and the thing we look at has to be less than the number. So, then we look at 34. So 34 has nothing to the left of it, so that means we take that out. And then 33 has a lot to the left of it, and we want to find the farthest thing. And everything left in our array has to be smaller than 33, right? Because we already took out everything that's bigger than it. So we basically go to 33, we find the like largest distance. So, we go to 8. And then we make sure we see the distance between 8 and 33, which is 7, 6, 6. So we get rid of this and make it a 6. Cool. So we basically have an algorithm. So how do we actually implement it? Like what kind of data structures are we going to use? The problem I'm seeing here is like, how do you know that the distance between 8 and 33 is 6 if you got rid of these two? Because then the index gets messed up, right? What happens if we store our index in the beginning? Like a cool kid. All right. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. So let's say that we store 5 for the index of 80, 0 for the index of 33, and so on. Okay, so we got all our indexes, so let's try this again. So we start with 80, index 5, and then the answer is, uh, and then we go to the 0th one, which was 34 before we deleted it. So that's 0, and then we just do 5 minus 0 is 5. 34, 
34 is over here. First one in our eight is still 34. So we do zero minus zero. That's zero. They don't want to change our max because it's five. And then we go to 33, which is over here. We go to the first one in the array. Because now we took out 34, which is eight. And then we do eight is one. 33 is seven. And then seven minus one is six. Noise. Okay. And then we and then we just keep track of the max of all that. I think we got our algorithm. Let's move on. Hey, we're doing pretty good, dude. I think I think we're fit to be Google and no, I'm kidding. Okay, okay. I know that the program interview is only a part, but hey, at least it's a, it's a confidence booster, okay? Coding problems. Let's see what else. Video tutorials. Recent interview experiences. <laughs> Google food bar challenge. What the heck? The Google food bar challenge has been known for the last five years, uh, or or as a secret so so much for a secret process of hiring developers and programmers all over the world. The food bar page is not accessible to everybody. Google has a list of what the user goes searching for, and if it finds relevant to programming, it gives the user an opportunity to participate in food bar challenging. Hey, no, I don't want to sign up. Whoa! So Google just puts out like random <laughs> recruitment pages to keep. Dude, that's so creepy. So I could just literally be typing up, I want to get good at YouTube, and that's like, hey, you want to join Google? Bro, how did, this is a troll. Okay, from now on, we're just going to be searching up programming stuff for the rest of my life. Okay, no more YouTube, no more entertainment. We're doing only Google stuff. And then eventually, they're gonna have to say, give me the foobar talent, right, right, right? Okay, enough of this nonsense. Okay, uh, all the other ones are just a problem. Come on, let's just do one of these. Let's see if uh, there's something interesting here. Ways of transforming one. Okay, so given two sequences, A and B, find out the number of unique ways in sequence A to form a subsequence of A that is identical to sequence B. Let us draw this out. Okay, so the example they give is A, B, C, 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 D, F, and then A, B, C, C, D, F. Okay, so I've basically seen there's three ways to do it because you can either take out this C, this C, or this C. <laughs> Excalnation over here. Noise geek for geeks. So, I mean, like, to get to, you're always gonna have to remove the same number of characters, right? And they're always gonna have to be the same characters. But the order also matters, that's the problem. Well, like, for this one, it's easy, right? So, you know that. To get from here to here, you just have to remove one C. So you just find out how many C's there are, and then that's how many ways there are to remove. Oh, okay. So, like, the way I've learned before to, like, remove stuff is, like, to do, use recursion, right? So, basically, what you do is if the first two characters are equal, then you just cut them off, and then move on to the second two characters. If they're equal, then cut them off. And then if they're equal, cut them off. Then if they're equal, cut them off. But if they're not equal, well, basically, you recurse either way. You either take it off from the smaller one or you take it off from the bigger one. No, but we're trying to take... We're only allowed to take off from the bigger one. So what you do is you take it off from here. And then they're equal. Take it off. Take it off. And nice. So we realized that this is the only one we had to remove from only the bigger one. So the second input they give us is A, A, B, B, A. And we want to get to A, B. So we take the first one. We could slash this off. So we move this one. And then we slash this off, then we remove this one, and then we remove that. Okay, so we found that we had to remove two or three of these. So this one, this one, and this one. So then we did look. Is there like a, like a, uh, I'm in English, I swear. I swear. So we could look at the two A's that are consecutive and see that the second one could be removed. Because I mean the first one could be removed as well. So there's two ways to do it. Then same with B. And then the last A is alone, so all alone and scared, so that doesn't matter. Okay, so let's try this again. So the idea is that we could take out this and take out this because they're equal, take out this because they're equal, and wham, we had to take out this boy, take out this because they're equal, wham, take out this boy, take out these because they're equal, take out these because they're equal, and take out these because they're equal, and wham. Okay, so we said we could remove this one, this one, or this one. So for the first one, there's two ways to remove it, right? Because we keep track of how many contiguous ones there are, right? So there's two contiguous ones. So you just do two, and then only you only have, you have to remove one of them. So it's two choose one. For the B, it's two choose one again. And then for the C, it's three choose one. I think we have our algorithm. All we gotta do is we basically take out all of the ones that are equal, see which one we gotta remove then. And then once we finish that, you look at how many contiguous of the same character there are. And then do that, choose however many you had to remove. And then multiply all of them together at the end, and wham, you're done. They're using a 2D DP matrix. Interesting. Will mine work too? Oh, I'm basically doing DP. Okay, yeah, I think mine works too, but 
theirs is a more like structured way to do it. That's pretty good. Very nice. I think we did pretty good, okay? I think we are ready to be Google engineers, okay? No more Farmer John. Farmer John, I am going to retire from your job. I'm going to join Google because I just had the best interview experience ever. No, I'm kidding. But this is, this, these problems are actually kind of interesting, and they're like a lot more simple, like easier to read than you use for a problem. So I might actually, this is actually something that I might want to do in the future. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys want me to do this for any other companies or like any other kind of thing like this, just let me know down in the comments. Even if it's not something completely different that you wanted me to do that's like science related, just let me know because I'm really open to feedback and I personally don't know what you guys want to see. So just let me know. If you enjoyed the content, leave a like and subscribe for more. And thank you guys so much for watching again and see you guys next time.